Hi everyone, for today's video I'm going to be doing a full face of Kaja. I have all of my products from Kaja right here ready to go. I'm really excited to get into today's video. I love a lot of things from Kaja. There's a couple of things from the brand that I don't love so much, but we'll get into all of that. Most of the products in today's video were purchased by me from the Sephora website. You can get Kaja from one of two places, Sephora or Mimi Box. And then a few months ago, Mimi Box actually reached out to me and they sent me a couple of products, which was super helpful for this video. And yeah, now I have a full face to show you guys. The only thing that I don't have is a mascara from Kaja, but I don't think that Kaja has a mascara. So let's just get started into today's video. So I'm actually going to start out by using the Kaja Miss Me Pina Colada Spray. This is a hydrating facial mist that you can wear under and over makeup, so I'm going to start my face with it and then end the face with it. It smells super nice and the spray nozzle is also very nice. It has a really fine but effective mist, which I really like. I'm going to be taking the Kaja Don't Settle Concealer. I have mine in the shade Sweet Toast and I really adore this concealer. Because Kaja doesn't have like a skin tint or a foundation or anything, I'm just going in with the concealer today. And I find that that gives me a really nice natural look. I actually do this a lot with this particular concealer. I've been using this concealer a ton lately. Aside from the the shade match being pretty spot on for me. I love the coverage, finish, and consistency of this concealer. If you guys are familiar with the old Naked Skin Concealer from Urban Decay, this one is so similar to that one. It's also a lot less expensive. I think it's probably like $15 cheaper than that concealer used to be, but it reminds me so much of it between the coverage of it and also just the finish of it. It has a really nice skin-like finish to it and it's super natural on the skin but it definitely does just enough of like covering where I need it to cover. So underneath the eyes, it does a really good job. Any like discoloration I have around my nose. So yeah, I love this concealer. I think that any concealer that I use will crease. If you have a concealer that says it's not going to crease, I feel like that is a myth. But because the concealer is so thin, I definitely think that the appearance of creasing is a lot less than it would be with like a thicker concealer. There's a couple of spots that I want to add a little bit more concealer to. So that is what my skin looks like with just the Kaja Don't Settle Concealer. I don't feel like I need any extra coverage anywhere. I spot concealed wherever I needed to after I was done blending out the first layer. But other than that, this is a really nice thin layer of coverage that I have going on. And I think that it looks so beautiful on the skin. It has a very, very skin-like finish to it. And I'm just overall super happy with this concealer. I love it. And I honestly reach for it a lot throughout the week, either worn on its own or paired with like a tinted moisturizer. I'm recovering from a little cold that I got from some babies that I babysat last week. So I have been dealing with really chapped lips and I just wanted to add a little bit of clear gloss. This is the Kaja Gloss Shot and it's in crystal clear. Just a little bit of clear gloss so my lips don't look like dead so yeah the next product that I have from Kaja is for the brows it is their brow blowout and I have mine in the shade medium brown this was actually a product that was gifted to me by Mimi box it was one of the products that I wanted to complete my full face I actually really like this formula although it is more of a wet brow gel and I usually don't like wet brow gels but because the wand is pretty small I find that I can get way more control out of it and there's also little fibers in the formula that I think does a good job at like thickening up the brow but even then I feel like with just a few swipes the brow looks totally filled in which I really love. It doesn't make me feel like I need to go in with any additional product or like a brow pen or anything because it does a great job sort of filling in the brow on its own. So yeah, brow completed. I think that the color match is also perfect for my hair. I usually like a brow to be a little bit lighter. So in my opinion, this is like a perfect brow color. I also do know because the formula is wet to kind of go in with a lighter hand. So kind of add I kind of try and do like tiny little brush strokes but yeah my brow honestly that looks amazing I feel like I don't usually get this particular like 
clean look with a brow gel. I feel like I have to usually manipulate the brows quite a bit whenever I use a brow gel as well. Before I do the eyes, I do want to get some bronzer on. So I'm going to go in with the Kaja Beachy Stamp Bronzer, and I have mine in the shade Toasty. This is one of those like gimmicky products. I never use the stamp when I use this bronzer, but just for the video, I will be using the stamp. It's actually pretty cute when you put it on. I could almost see like doing a whole look and then like using the stamp on its own. But yeah, I don't think that the stamp is necessary. It's not like you use the stamp to like blend out the product or anything. You can be just as effective dipping your brush into the product and applying it straight to your cheek. But this is what Toasty looks like on the skin. Toasty is one of two shades that the bronzer comes in and it is the deeper of the two shades. So there is definitely room for improvement in the shade range of this bronzer. I will say that if you are a little bit deeper than I am, you could definitely get away with using this shade, but there are obviously a lot of shades that are left out with there only being two bronzer shades. This bronzer shade is very flattering on me though, and it is a shade that I typically go for in bronzer, so I really like the shade and I love the finish of it too. It's really nice and glowy and very natural looking. Because I did it to the other side, I've got to do it to this side. Also though, with this particular product, although it is a cheek product from them that I actually do really like, I would say it's definitely not a necessary product. Also with the packaging being so bulky, it's kind of not the greatest fit in like a makeup drawer. So I would say if you were like kind of on the fence about getting this bronzer, I would say maybe skip it. Moving on to my eyes, I am so ready to talk about my favorite product from Kaja. These are the Kaja Little Beauty Bento Eyeshadow Stacks. I adore these. Each stack has three different colors with it, and the formulas also range from like shimmers to glittery shimmers, glitter toppers, and then they also have mattes. Two out of the five Beauty Bento eyeshadows that I have were sent to me by Mimi Box, and the two that were sent to me are their newest all matte stacks. So I have number 13, Velvet Dream, which is more of your warmer toned mattes, definitely the one that I gravitate to more. And then you have your 14, neutral moment stack which is a little bit more of a neutral I wouldn't say too cool toned but neutral and those are what all of those shades look like and then these other three I've had for quite some time I love 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 these eyeshadows you are obviously limited to like three colors but I think that the colors are so cute in these and I just love them I love the little stack like they click so nicely and they're so cute. So this one, which might be my favorite one, it is the Toasted Caramel Stack. So you have a light shimmery, kind of like white gold shade here. You have a sort of bronzy shade here, and then a more deeper bronze in the bottom. All of these colors are phenomenal. The next one I have is Orange Blossom, which I also really like. It has a little bit more of like a unique color story to it. So this one has a little bit of like a peachy, pinky, light shade on the top. And then you have this like fiery orange gold shade in the middle. It's so pretty. And then you have a little deeper bronze shade on the bottom. And then the last deck I have is Spike Ginger, which actually has a mix of mattes and a shimmer. So you have like a nude tone matte right here. You have a kind of taupey bronze shade in the middle and then a really nice soft medium toned brown on the end. I'm just going to apply a little bit of eye primer to my eyelids. So because I love the brown in the Spike Ginger stack so much, I'm going to start my eye look out by using this one. Just going to take it on a nice fluffy brush and apply it through the crease. I'm going to try and use an eyeshadow color from each stack that I have. But yeah, these are definitely my favorite products from Kaja. I think that they're the most unique because they come in those cute stacks and the stacks each have their own super cute little color story. There's definitely something for everyone in the stacks. I really hope that they come out one day with like a pastel shimmery glittery stack. I think that would be so cute. Like imagine it was like a light purple a light green and like a 
light pink or like a light yellow how cute would that be from my velvet dream stack i'm going to take the lightest shade on the top on a little blending brush and i just want to use this to apply over top of my blend that i just did just on the top just so i can make sure that the shadows are looking nice and seamless but then also taking that color down a little bit because i think it kind of went a little bit too high because I just feel like everyone's going to want to see this super beautiful, like, fiery, peachy, orange, gold shade in action. I'm going to go ahead and go in with it today. I am using my finger because I feel like sometimes when you use a brush, you can risk there being a little bit of fallout. And because these shadows do have, like, a lot of shimmer and very very fine looking glitter in them I feel like they I feel like you do get a little bit of fallout sometimes that's also why I didn't want to go in with my blush right away just in case I needed to go back in with a little bit more concealer I didn't want my cheeks to get messed up so yeah that's just what the shade from orange blossom looks like all over the lid it's so gorgeous you guys I love it flicking away any fallout real quick I wanted to compare the deep bronzy shades from both the Toasted Caramel stack and the Orange Blossom stack. The top swatch is from Orange Blossom and the bottom swatch is from Toasted Caramel. I think I'm going to go in with the Toasted Caramel shade. Oh, the top one is so pretty though. Look at that shine. I am using a brush with this color, but I did decide to go in with the Toasted Caramel bronzy shade. And I'm just applying that on the outer corner. Going back in with that medium matte brown from my Spiked Ginger stack. And then I want to compare the top shades in the Orange Blossom stack compared to the Toasted Caramel stack. I just want to see which one will look best with the look. So that is from the Toasted Caramel stack, and that bottom shade is from the Orange Blossom stack. The Orange Blossom one didn't go on as pigmented as I thought it would. I'm going to try and like swatch it again. I feel like these are definitely like more glitter topper formulas but that's really pretty too i think i'm gonna go in with the toasted caramel light shade though and i'm going in with my pinky finger Ooh, just to get the product on initially and now i took a little bit i got a little bit of the color on this sort of fluffy eyeshadow brush Oh my god, this look is coming out so pretty. I really love these eyeshadows, especially like the glittery, shimmery formula. I feel like they're so unique. I feel like you get eyeshadows that look like this in the pan, but then on the eye, they don't ever go on this smooth. But they are so beautiful and smooth on the eyes, and they just create the most gorgeous looks. So this is the deepest brown that I have in all of the sets. It is from their Neutral Moment set, and it's the last shade in the stack. I'm taking that on an angled eyeshadow brush, and I'm going to be pressing it into my lash line just to give me a little bit of that eyeshadow liner look. Taking this light nude shade again from the Velvet Dream stack, and I just wanted to go over that top blend again just to kind of bring it down some making sure nothing looks too intense all while also highlighting the brow bone kind of cleaning up the edges with it that's what i love about like a matte nude shade you can do a lot of like subtle cleaning up with it and there was a little bit of fallout if that bothers you you could always do your shadow first but honestly to get a look like this have it be so shiny and glittery but also like the shadows again like i said they look so soft on the eyes i feel like you might just have to accept the fallout a little bit but not a big deal see like we didn't go in with our cheek products for a reason picking up some of the matte brown shade that we first used for the look and I'm taking it on a little pencil brush and I am lining my lower lash line with it just to complete the look. 
put mascara on, didn't need to include it because it wasn't Kaja. But if you wanted to know the combo of mascara that I used, I used the Oma Beauty by Sharon C Batter Boom Mascara and the e.l.f. Big Mood Mascara. So I have four different cheek options for my blush. I'm going to talk about two that I dislike and two that I like. So the first one that I dislike, which was very hard, it was very hard for me to take that because I really wanted to like this. When I saw it on the Sephora website, I bought it so fast because I love my little Kaja stacks. Like, you know, I love these little eyeshadows. So when I saw one for the cheeks, I was like, okay, gotta have it. I know that's gonna be a fave of mine. And I've got to say, I really hate it. I never ever reach for this stack for several reasons. One, the combination of the products included in this stack is so bizarre. You first have a matte blush with traces of glitter. So let me go ahead and swatch that for you. Matte basic blush, traces of glitter. Next, you have a wildly pigmented frosty highlight. So there's that. I don't think that the highlight goes on very smooth either. Lastly, cream bronzer. Cream, cream contour, cream bronzer. I don't know who was in charge of putting together this collection of cheek products, but they obviously don't use makeup often. I would never wear a cream bronzer with a blinding highlight and a matte blush. I would never pair any of those products together. Also though, once you get the bronzer kind of blended out, it doesn't really look that deep, and unfortunately, this is one of three shades that they came out with for the Play Bento stack. I have the medium one, so the fact that I'm finding the bronzer itself to even be like a little bit light, I think it shows up, but it's a little bit light for me, and this being the medium stack, that's kind of upsetting. So yeah, I am not a fan of the Play Bento stack at all. I have the shade cloud latte if you wanted to still look into it, but it is not, it is not for me. The next cheek product that I don't love is the Cheeky Stamp in Bossy. This is one of the products that was sent to me by Mimi Box, and looking up the shade like straight on by packaging, it looks like a shade that I would really, really like, but it actually um, ends up going on quite sheer. And there's a decent amount of glitter in this liquid blush, which doesn't make it the most uh, flattering look on the skin. And it shears out so much. Like, you see that it sheared out quite a bit. So the two Kaja products that I actually do like is the Kaja Mochi Pop. I have mine in the shade Atmosphere. And it's sort of like a moussey, bouncy blush formula. It's really cute. The color is really cute as well. I do think that I would typically go for a little bit of a deeper shade, but this is the one that I have and it does look pretty on the cheeks. And then I have this Cutie Bento stack, which is kind of like a lip and cheek. And I have mine in the shade Juicy Watermelon. It comes with a little pinky nude shade and then a brighter shade over here, like a little watermelon shade. I'm going to start by taking my e.l.f. Putty blush brush and getting a decent amount of product on the brush, just because this product is a little bit light on me, so I want to build it up as much as possible. But it is super cute. See how it's like, you know, got a cute little pop of color. I feel like this formula would be great for people who have really oily skin that maybe want to get into cream products, but don't like the idea of having like really creamy glossy cheeks so i feel like this kind of gives you like a cream powder finish and feel on the skin i feel like it's kind of blurred my cheeks a little bit just because of the consistency of it i love blush a lot so i'm going to take a little bit more and this time i'm taking it from the cutie bento stack i'm taking the darker shade of the juicy watermelon and I'm just going to press it into my skin, hoping this gives me a little bit more of a glow. Yeah, just putting a little bit of glow into the cheeks. 
two lip products that I have from Kaja. I actually got in a little set. I have the Kaja Air Heart in the shade 03 Ride or Die, which I do think that you can still purchase. So that's what Ride or Die looks like. It's really pretty. And then I have the Moisture Melt Lip Gloss Stick in the shade Cutie Pie which I don't think that you can purchase. I got these in a set, like I said. Yeah, I guess maybe the Moisture Melt lip gloss stick in the set that I have was maybe like limited edition to the set, but you can get the Ride or Die shade, which I actually prefer. I like that shade better. And the Moisture Melt lip gloss stick is okay. Like the formula is okay. It just, I don't know. I don't think that it's anything special. I also don't love the color, so I don't really ever reach for it. But I think that the Ride or Die little Air Heart lipstick is really cute. So I'm going to apply a little bit of it. It's pretty full coverage, but I just wanted to apply a little, little bit on my lips. I have three shades of the Gloss Shot formula from Kaja, and I had another shade, which was Pink Drink, and that shade was gorgeous. I don't know where it went. I traveled with it over the summer, so I went to Florida with it, and after my trip in Florida, I don't know where it went. Like, I did not see it again, so unfortunately, I don't have it with me, but Pink Drink is such a good shade. The next best shade, in my opinion, is Honey Drizzle. These glosses are so nice, in my opinion. You already saw me apply the Crystal Clear gloss earlier. And then I also have Milk Tea. So yeah, that's Honey Drizzle, and then that's Milk Tea. Both really cute, but Pink Drink was a little bit deeper than both of these, and it was perfect. It was so, so cute. The Gloss Shot formula is what I wish the Tower 28 glosses were. I know people love the Tower 28 glosses. I personally don't like them very much. I don't like how they feel on the lips. I don't like how they taste. I feel like there's absolutely no avoiding whatever it is getting into my mouth, and I really dislike it. I really wish I liked the Tower 28 glosses, and I will wear them from time to time, but I never have a great time using them. But the gloss shots from Kaja are exactly what I wish the Tower 28 glosses were. So happy about that. I do wish that they had more shades in the glosses because I would definitely be getting a lot more. I'm just applying a little bit of the Honey Drizzle shade. So cute. So now I'm going to set my skin with some of the setting mist. Pina Colada, like I said earlier, really nice. Mm. The product also smells so delicious. Obviously, if you are sensitive to scents, it is not like a smelly product. It's really not like overly fragranted but it just smells very like sweet like pineapple so it's really nice and refreshing so yeah this is the final look full face of kaja what do you guys think i think that this looks so good there are lots of products that i love from kaja there are several products that i don't love so i would love to know what you guys think down below i feel like out of all the products that i talked about in today's video the four really stand out products to me in the line is the concealer. I love how this looks on the skin. It is so natural, gives you just the right amount of coverage, and it's so gorgeous. I feel like it really lasts a long time, which is good. So love the concealer. I love the Kaja Brow Blowout. I think my brows look phenomenal for just being a brow gel. Like, I want to know if you guys are as impressed as I am with these brows because this was only brow gel, and like you guys saw my brows before, they are pretty sparse. They aren't thin, but like they're, I guess like they're not thin width wise, but they're pretty thin, like considering there are lots of bald spots in my brows and my brows just look so clean, so filled in and it was just brow gel. I'm shocked. The most standout product in my opinion are the little beauty bento shadows. I just love them. They're so unique for the line and a lot of the shades that they come in, I don't have replicated in other eyeshadow palettes. So I just love these so, so much. And then their gloss shots. I really, really love this lip gloss formula. It's not too sticky. It's got a great gloss, as you can see, and I think it comes in some really cute shades. So yeah, that is going to be it from me today. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I would love to know what you guys think of this full face of Kaja down below. If you aren't already subscribed, definitely go ahead and do so, and hopefully I see you next time.